Hey, hey, what's up everybody? It's Rutech. Today, we'll be talking about the best $700 gaming PC that you can get in December of 2021. Amidst this GPU price crisis, $700 seems to be the entry level cost for a PC that can run most games at 1080p with a consistent 60 and above frames per second, and you'll find out why as you watch the video. I have something kind of new for you guys. I call it Ru scores, which is three individual scores that I give for the PC build based on upgradability, performance, and balance. Feel free to pause here to read what each score means. So for this PC, I give a score of four for upgradability, three for performance, and four for balance. But yeah, with this PC, you can game at 1080p, 60 FPS, no problems at all. Now with the chip crisis, unfortunately for budget gamers, getting a secondhand GPU is kind of the only way to get the performance that you seek. However, on the bright side of things, with this budget, you won't have to make any bids or go hunting for a good deal. And you'll find out why a little bit later in the video when I'm talking about the graphics card that I chose out. Now, before I talk about all the parts for this particular PC, I want to tell you about Digital Chill Mart. DigitalChillMart.com is the best place to get cheap Windows 10 and 11 license keys. If you're building a PC or have built one, but you're still running an unactivated version of Windows, Digital Chill Mart has you covered. Simply go to the front page of their website, scroll down a bit, and you'll find Windows 10 and 11 for great prices. And the prices get better. I have a coupon code for you guys to use. Type in Rutech right here, and it'll be instantly applied. Link for digitalchillmart.com will be in my description. All right, so let's start out by talking about the CPU. I chose out the simple and minimal Intel i3-10100F, and here's why. The 10100F is a quad-core eight-thread processor with a base clock of 3.6 gigahertz and boost clock of 4.3. It also has hyper-threading. It can game, it is solid, it's definitely not slow. Nowadays, you can get a very powerful gaming-ready processor for less than $100, which is incredible and is probably thanks to AMD taking the initiative and taking the reins back when they dropped the Ryzen 3 1200 a good while ago. Wow, I can't believe the 1200 came out four years ago. But anyway, I know there is a pretty big misconception out there that Intel systems aren't great for gaming anymore when put up against Ryzen builds when you're on a budget. But with this chip crisis, the 10100F is actually a lot better of a choice as it is way cheaper than its AMD performance equal, the Ryzen 3100, and will actually even give you better performance than the 3100 in some instances. But yeah, this i3-10100F is the optimal choice if you can only spend around $700 because it makes room in the budget for a good 1080p graphics card, which like I said, we'll talk about later in the video. Next up, the motherboard. I chose the basic but reliable Gigabyte B560M Micro ATX board. Now the primary reasoning for this board versus any others is it gets the job done while being very affordable. Since this PC isn't drawing very much power, a super strong motherboard with top tier VRMs simply is not needed. But that's not to say that this motherboard is bad by any means. Moving on though, this B560 board also has four RAM slots, meaning room for upgrading if needed, two M2 slots, meaning super easy storage upgrading capability, a max memory speed of 3200 megahertz, and a max memory support of 128 gigabytes. For being one of the cheaper Intel boards, this thing certainly has some good properties. Another super great thing about this board is it supports upgrading to 11th gen Intel processors. So down the road, if you ever want to get on that new 11th gen wave, this board will support you all the way. Next is the RAM. Fortunately, DDR4 RAM has gotten a good bit cheaper throughout 2021, allowing for more flexibility. So I opted for some RGB RAM here. I picked out the Corsair Vengeance RGB Pro, two sticks of eight gigabyte, 3000 megahertz CL16 RAM. As most of you know, 16 gigabytes is the bare minimum for gaming in 2021, at least if you wanna play the newer games in 1080p. The max supported RAM speed for the 10th gen i3 is 2666 megahertz, but 3000 megahertz models will still work just fine. And they're also nice to have as if you were to upgrade to 11th gen Intel with this motherboard, you'll be able to use that extra bit of clock speed. This RAM is also CL16, which is the optimal area you want to be in for latency. And just for a bit of flair, this RAM is, like I said, RGB, which we could squeeze in thanks to the recent lower RAM prices. Now for the storage. I chose out the super reliable Crucial P2 500GB M2 NVMe SSD. Now the reason I chose this particular set of storage is simple. It is not only very reliable, but it is some of the best priced NVMe storage out there. 
I've used this particular NVMe SSD for quite a few builds and I find it to be extremely reliable and very fast. 500 gigabytes should be perfect for most of your gaming needs, given that you don't have a massive game library. Regardless of that though, the motherboard does have two M2 slots, so upgrading your storage should not be difficult at all. And next up, the part you probably have been waiting to hear about, the graphics card. With $300, you can get a used RX 580 from eBay, no bidding is necessary, free shipping. Here's my little crash course on how to do it. Simply go to ebay.com, search up RX 580 or GTX 1650 Super. Set your price filter to max out at $310 and then you have two options. If you're feeling impatient, just wanna buy the card, head over to the buy now listings. But if not, go ahead and make a bid on a 580. The only thing I recommend you 100% do before that is look at the item description. Make sure it says it's in working condition, it's been tested or something along those lines so that in the very rare case that the seller sends you a broken card, you can get a refund from eBay. Now for the case, I picked out the Deepcool Matrix 40 Micro ATX case. This is a really great case and I'll tell you why. For starters, it's a budget case, but it comes with a tempered glass side panel. It also has pretty good airflow as well as one included 120 millimeter fan. It's also very beginner friendly. If this is your first ever PC build, this is one of the easier cases to use. With that all being said though, if you're not particularly a fan of this case I chose out, you can really pick out any ATX case that you'd like. If there's another chassis that catches your eye, just ensure it is ATX or preferably micro ATX form factor and it'll work with this build. Last but not least, the power supply. Similar to DDR4 RAM, the prices for good power supplies has been dropping over the past months, which is why I was able to choose out a very great supply for this build, being the EVGA BR500 80 plus bronze certified ATX supply. EVGA's BR line has always been one of the most reliable and well-priced sets of supplies available. And not only that, but with 500 watts of 80 plus bronze power, you have a decent amount of room for upgrading, around 60 to 70 watts of cushion to be exact. And that will wrap it up for all the parts in this very capable $700 PC build. The links for all those parts are in the description. And hey, let me know what you guys think of the new Roo score system. I kind of just came up with it on the spot when I was editing together the video, and I thought it would at least add a little bit of insight on what type of PC we're gonna be looking at at the beginning of the video instead of forcing you guys to watch the entire video to know how the PC will perform and what not. So yeah, just let me know in the comments any ideas, any changes I should make. I'll leave that all up to you guys. Also, if you haven't joined my brand new refreshed Discord server, go ahead and check the description for a link to join. If you need help building your PC or just need some general advice when it comes to PC building or PC tech, there are a ton of people there that would love to help, including myself. If you enjoy the video, drop a like. Have any comments or questions, drop a comment below. And if you enjoy the content that you're seeing, drop a sub. Thanks for watching. Peace out.